This is Harsh Rules, I'm Ben Harsh, and today we're going to continue to learn to play Twilight Imperium, the 4th edition. Twilight Imperium, the 4th edition, was released in 2017 by Fantasy Flight Games and designed once again by Christian T. Peterson. This game supports 3-6 to six players and takes about 4-8 to eight hours to play. Twilight Imperium is a game of galactic conquest where each player will need to master military strategy, political intrigue, diplomatic relations, and profitable trade agreements to reach the 10 victory points necessary to win the game. In the last video, we covered lore and the game setup, so if you haven't seen that video, you might want to go check it out because we're going to jump right into the game rules. One key factor in learning Twilight Imperium is understanding the game's various currencies and economies. So let's take a closer look at the mediums of exchange. To help us learn the rules, I've organized these currencies into three categories. The first medium is logistics. By using command tokens, players can allocate their faction's productivity to support military and strategic objectives. With economic currency, players can spend their planet's resources and exchange commodities for trade goods to purchase and upgrade units and technologies as well as execute specific strategy card abilities. By mastering the political currency of influence, players can influence collective decisions that benefit their faction's objectives with new laws and directives as well as specific strategy card abilities. Now, let's take a closer look at each of these mediums of exchange. First, let's look at logistics. Now, let's discuss the use of command tokens. As you may remember from setup, command tokens are always placed on one of these three spaces on the command sheet. Players begin the game with 8 of their total 16 command tokens assigned to their command sheet, 3 command tokens in the tactics space, 3 command tokens in the fleet space, and 2 command tokens in the strategy space. Let's review each of these spaces to learn how they govern gameplay. First, the tactics space. Command tokens in the tactic space dictate the number of tactical actions a player can conduct per turn. In each tactical action, a player targets a system on the galaxy map, mobilizes their fleet to intercept, resolves any conflict in the system, and produces new units there. When a player conducts a tactical action, they place one command token from the tactic space onto the targeted system. When a player begins the game, he or she can conduct three of these tactical actions. Next, let's look at the fleet space. The number of command tokens in the fleet space limits the number of ships a player can maintain in a single system. Please note that fighter units do not count towards this limit. If, at the end of a player's turn, their fleet size in any system exceeds their fleet limit, they must destroy their own ships until they meet that limit. The limit, at the start of the game, is three ships per system, not counting fighters. Finally, we have the strategy space. Command tokens in the strategy space equal the number of times a player may execute the secondary strategy on a strategy card. At the beginning of the game, a player can execute two secondary strategies. We will learn about the primary and secondary ability on strategy cards in just a moment. But first, some final notes on command tokens and the tactic, fleet, and strategy spaces on the command sheet. Remember, each player can only have a maximum of 16 command tokens in play. During the status phase, command tokens can be redistributed to these three command sheet spaces to fulfill a player's strategy. Next, let's take a look at economics. In episode 1, we touched briefly on resources during setup. Most planets generate resources that can be tapped into to build new units. The actual currency is represented by the planet card. 
new units can be produced at the end of a tactical action from a space dock. When a player spends a planet's resources, they flip the planet card face down. Just be aware, planet card resources cannot be spent piecemeal. It's all or nothing. Once a planet card is flipped down, all resources, influence, and technology specialties have been exhausted for that round. Besides resources, trade goods are a currency that you can also use to purchase units. The advantage of trade goods is they can be stored for later and they can be traded amongst other players for favors. When a player decides to purchase new units, the cost of each unit is listed on the faction sheet. Be aware that some factions may need to gain the necessary technology to build some units like the War Sun. Other units, like the planetary defense system and the space dock, are considered structures that cannot be purchased but must be built through the use of the construction strategy card. This nuance to the 4th edition will be made clear once we cover off on the strategy cards in just a moment. Another form of economic currency that can be put into play are commodities. Commodities are plentiful cultural items unique to each faction. Various races may generate different amounts of these unique commodity items. The number of commodities that a particular faction may have to trade is identified on the faction sheet. Commodities themselves cannot be spent directly, but they can be traded with other factions. When a commodity is traded to another faction, it becomes a trade good. Therefore, it's prudent to maintain trade with other factions to ensure a steady supply of trade goods which can be used like resources to purchase items. And when you earn a new trade good, you place it here on the command sheet. The final currency in this section is based on technology. In Twilight Imperium, players can develop new technologies and upgrade existing units. Accomplishing these technological breakthroughs is achieved by building off the knowledge of existing tech and tapping into the technological expertise of specific planets. To illustrate this, we're going to use our theoretical Mintac player. Let's say another player has conducted their strategic action and put a technology strategy card into play. The technology strategy card allows a player to research a new technology by spending a command token and paying four resources. Reviewing their components, the Mintac player has two general technologies at their disposal. The first general technology comes from the planet Lazar, which the player controls. However, to use this technology, the player will need to exhaust the planet card for this round. The second general technology comes from Sarween tools, which the faction has previously discovered. Adding up the two general technology icons they have, and reviewing the available undiscovered technologies, the Mentac player learns they possess the prerequisites for Transit Diodes and Space Dock 2. If you look in the lower left-hand side of these cards, you can see the number of required technologies to unlock each. The Mentac player then decides to spend their command token and four resources in the form of trade goods to research one new technology. The Mentac player announces they are going to research the unit upgrade for Space Dock 2. To accomplish the technological breakthrough, the Mentac player exhausts the planet card for Lazar and utilizes the current general technology learned from Sarween tools. The unit upgrade card for Space Dock 2 is placed directly on the faction sheet over the Space Dock area. Finally, let's look at politics. In Twilight Imperium, influence has two main uses. First, players can use influence to purchase command tokens when the leadership strategy card is played. Second, when the agenda phase becomes available, influence gives a player political power to sway the vote for laws and directives. Now that we know how the mediums of exchange work in Twilight Imperium, it's time to move on to more challenging mechanics. 
Now let's take a look at Twilight Imperium's phases of gameplay. A round of gameplay in Twilight Imperium is divided into four game phases. First up is the strategy phase. In this phase, players choose a strategy card, each of which supports a particular gameplay objective and defines the order of play during the game round. Next is the action phase. During this phase, players move units, resolve combat, and execute actions on their strategy cards. This is followed by the status phase. In this phase, players score objectives and earn victory points, as well as clean up for the next game round. And finally, when the first player reaches Mechatol Rex and removes the Custodian token, comes the Agenda phase. In this phase, players vote on political agendas which can modify the rules of the game. Now, let's look at these game phases in greater detail, starting with the strategy phase. First, we need to gather the necessary components from the common play area. Collect the strategy cards shown here at the bottom of the play area. Now, lay the strategy cards out in order for everyone to see. Now, each of these strategy cards provides an opportunity to advance the player's ultimate objectives, based on the theme of the card. The power of this strategy is balanced by the number in the upper right hand corner of the card which establishes the order of play. Now, following the order of play from setup, each player will select one of the eight strategy cards. The remaining two cards not selected gain two trade good tokens to incent players to choose them in the subsequent round of play. Now it's important to note that later strategy phases will have a different order of play that's established by a strategy card, so let's take a quick look at that. The player that selects Politics, strategy card number 3, has a primary ability that allows him to choose the next speaker. One of the advantages to being speaker is that you're the player that gets to go first in the selection process and then the order of play follows a clockwise pattern around the game board. So in this example, let's say that the Mintak player selects the Hakan player to be the next speaker. During the next strategy phase, the selection process would begin with the Hakan player and move around the game board clockwise. Now, to get a better understanding of which cards to choose, let's walk through all eight strategy cards. Strategy card number one is Leadership. Strategy cards are divided into two halves. The upper half's primary ability can be activated by the owner. The lower half's secondary ability can be activated by any player that spends a command token. On this first strategy card, Leadership, the owner can gain three command tokens, and they can buy a command token for every three influence they spend. Other players can spend a command token to gain the ability to buy more command tokens for three influence each. Strategy card number two is Diplomacy. With Diplomacy, the owner can choose one planet that they control, other players must place a command token from their reinforcements on that system and then the owner can refresh all exhausted planets in the system. For the secondary ability, other players can spend a command token to refresh two of their own exhausted planets. Next is the Politics Strategy card. With the Politics Strategy card, the owner can choose the next speaker, draw two action cards, and reorganize the top two cards of the Agenda deck. For the Secondary ability, players can spend one token to draw two action cards. Next is the Construction Strategy card. With this card, players can place one PDS unit or space dock on a planet of their choice and place one PDS on another planet of their choice. For the secondary ability, players can place one token from their strategy pool on any system 
and they may place either one space dock or one PDS on that planet. Next is the Trade Strategy card. The owner of this card gains three trade goods and replenishes all of their commodities. They can also choose any number of other players and those players can take advantage of the secondary ability at no cost of command token. For the secondary ability, players can spend one of their command tokens to replenish all of their commodities. Next is the Warfare Strategy card. This card's owner can take one command token from the game board and return it to his command sheet. For the secondary ability, a player can spend a command token to use the production ability of the space dock in their home system. That would complete all the player drawn strategy cards, but let's keep going and look at the last two. Next is the technology strategy card. With this card, the owner can research one technology and spend six additional resources to research each additional technology. For the secondary ability, a player can spend one command token and four resources to research one technology. Next is the Imperial Strategy card. The owner of this card can immediately score one public objective if they fulfill the requirements and gain one victory point if they control Mechatol Rex, otherwise they draw one secret objective. For the secondary ability, a player can spend one command token to draw one secret objective. Now, let's preview the next game phase in the sequence called the Action Phase. This will get us grounded for our final and most in-depth episode of this tutorial series. In the Action Phase, each player will take turns in the order of the numbers on their chosen strategy cards. This is known as Initiative Order. When taking turns in Initiative Order, each player has four choices at their disposal. The player must carefully choose one before the initiative moves on to the next player in the sequence. Once the order is complete, the initiative returns to the beginning player and so on. A player may choose a tactical action. With a tactical action, this allows the player to target a planet, move nearby ships, resolve any conflict in the system, and produce new units. The player may also select a component action. With a component action, the player may activate the effect of a game component that lists the word action. The action keyword is typically found on specific strategy cards, or the action keyword may be found on a race's special ability on their faction sheet. The player may also choose a strategic action. When executing a strategic action, the player activates and resolves the ability on their strategy card. Once the player completes their strategic action, it unlocks the fourth choice. The player then has the option to pass and end their turn for the action phase. And, when all players in the initiative order have passed, the action phase ends. In the next episode, we're going to dig deep on the tactical action, as well as finish the remaining phases of gameplay specifically the status phase and the agenda phase. And that concludes our second tutorial for Twilight Imperium, the fourth edition. To be notified when the next Harsh Rules episode becomes available, please subscribe to this channel. As always, I'm Ben Harsh for Harsh Rules. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.